out of the eternal presence is born eternal glory. And the glory of God that is with us of the angelic hosts is with the children of men. For you also are his offspring, and out of you shall come forth deliverance. For the Christ is within you, the leaven of God, that shall bring down those hills of mortal pride and exalt in man those elements of childlike simplicity that enable him to have attunement with us of the angelic host. And now I speak to you of the angels. I speak to you of those servants of God who are the savants of mankind, who also extend to mankind the power and the grace that is from God and enable them in moments of oppression when the darkened and horrendous forces that seek world domination for the dark powers are active, replacing them by the spirit of obedience and of God dominion. We come to you then this day to say, let not your hearts be troubled concerning the horrors of the world. These shall pass away as men and women seize the opportunities of every moment and recognize that in the blessed opportunities that life has given unto them is the possibility of their victory and attainment beyond present mortal belief. For even individuals themselves will find that their human personality, as it submits to the divine, finally becomes imbued with that faith that moves mountains of adversity and enables them to enter in to a spirit of blessed attunement with the angelic hosts, which will make them outposts of heaven, bringing grace and beauty into the lives of millions and ultimately into the lives of billions of mankind, now searching and praying inwardly even when they do not understand how to lisp or mouth the prayer for deliverance from the forces that they cannot presently understand. In their bewilderment, mankind are reaching out, but they are reaching out for those things that are carnal, for those things that are mortal, for those things that in all the years of the earth's creation have never brought deliverance unto mankind. We then, of the higher octaves of light, speak to men and women today and say, cast aside the enervating manifestations of darkness, the things that you have wallowed in that have created your misery in the past and replace them by the indomitable virtue of God as he seeks to kindle within your heart his flame, that light which is the passing of the lamp of knowledge to mankind. For right knowledge will always bring to every age deliverance from those conditions that have kept it in enslavement and bondage. We say to you today then, let your hearts, rather than be troubled, become hearts of exaltation. Be proud of the moment in which you receive your swaddling garments of light. Be proud of the moments when you are able to attune with the angelic host. Be proud and glad for the moments when the angels can commune with you and convey to you a little more of the grace of God which you so diligently seek, yet sometimes turn your backs against unwittingly. We say to all of you, cast aside those unwanted and undesirable qualities of mortal ego and mortal saturation in self-pity and replace it by the creation of God that is the splendid divine image within. For each of you were stamped and graven with the image of God, the spirit of man, the spirit of God. 
These are not always properly identified. Let men understand that they were made in the divine image and that that is the Spirit of God. It is also the soul of God in a sense for he has given himself away to man. But there is also a spirit of man which has a certain activity of perverseness within it for it is actually a mass creation of the egos of the multitudes and its name is legion. It seeks to deploy in man all of the forces of light and cause them to be attached to conditions which are less than desirable, taking his energies away from his creator and taxing those energies until they are dissipated in senseless meanderings down through the sullied streams of mortal thought and feeling. We seek to lift you out of that and to lift you into the glories of God, to the crystal flowing river, to the fount of living flame, to the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, and to the invoking within you of the divine image. We seek to bring to you the power of freedom that is inherent within the Christ child, the Christel, Christel clarity of the illumination flame. We seek to inspire hope within your hearts that the darkness that is past is the darkness of the night and that the future that lies ahead is the brilliance of the dawn. We come to inspire, we come to infire, and we come to teach, to reestablish those conduits of God-realization over which the vital energies may flow, and to bring to you freedom from the glamour of the world and peace within your soul, that you may learn to do well and to rejoice in the well-doing that is the flame of God leaping in hope toward aspirations of nobility and the manifestation upon the planetary body of the golden age civilization held so dear by the saints and saviors throughout all ages. For every avatar, as he has given his energies, has always silently said within the magnificent flame of his own soul, I am serving thy cause, O God. I am helping to bring reality to birth into flaming magnificence within men. And one day, all that is damp and all that is dark and all that is oppressive that is underneath the earth will itself yield as the young shoot of aspiration presses through and finds the sunlight of divine love mellowing all things and producing in its warmth and glow the fires of the resurgent image, the resurrection flame of cosmic hope, the indomitable glory of God flashing forth its identity in every leaf and twig, and above all in man made a little lower than the angels, yet crowned with more glory and honor. You are the hope of God. You are a green tree that has been a dried one. And we now say, let the bow reach out and let the signs of his appearing appear and let hope to the earth spring forth. For behold, when ye see these things, ye say, spring is nigh. The master said it, and I say it again from the angelic level, the signs of the appearing of the Christ are dawning within men, and when he shall come, you shall be like him, for you shall see him as he is.
How fruitful are the meditations of the Lord. How complete is the mastery of universal life by his thought. And the dominion that he has taken over the earth is one of supreme accuracy and architecture. How lovely is he in the morning as he riseth in splendor to shed the golden luminosity of his radiance over the earth, complete in mastery, prince of the hills and lord of all the earth. As I come to you this day then, it is to expand in you the outreach for perfection that will envision the completeness of the God ideals for universal life as well as the personal person. Let all understand the outreach of the universal from within the heart as a stream of radiance that contacts the reality of God, as a stream of radiance that fills the universe with light and opens the gateway within the consciousness to the dominion of Almighty God. Out of this beauty, out of this supernal architecture of cosmic loveliness, man is able to perceive that life ahead in the future is a thing of beauty and a joy forever, as some have also said. And therefore, when I come to you today, it is to remind you that you may face the future without fear, for you are designed by the Lord God Almighty. The creator of all life has sustained his domain within you, and he is the keeper of the seals and the keeper of perfection and the way of the future for all who understand that he is the Lord of the whole earth, that give him dominion over all of the energies that are using them, all of the energies that are resident within them, all of the energies that they are, the completeness of their being. As pertains to the energies that are using them, they ask for the transmutation of all that is not of the light into the substance of purity. As to the radiance that is their own externalized grace, they ask that that also be given unto God and expanded to be shared by all of their brothers everywhere. As to the radiance of the eternal himself, that which is the eternal fire blazing forth from within their heart, that is the noontide of cosmic grace. Let that light then become the energizer of every good thing which they will think to do. For mankind throughout the centuries have often imagined vain things, and they have sought to do evil and they have misappropriated the energy of God, and they have created a nightmare of intrigue and treachery in the world, which they have also sown and are now therefore reaping. But we come with a sound of rejoicing. We come with a trumpeting of grace. We come with a stream of the majesty of the resurrection flame. We come not to coerce, but to coalesce all into one radiant, orb of luminous light energy, a haven for all who are discouraged by those outer conditions which were never created by God, which were never the imaginations of his heart, which were never the thought of his creative mind. Oh, the lie, the terrible lie that the carnal mind has created Shall we then vanquish it into that pit of delusion to which it ought to be consigned? And shall we then call also for the rolling up of annihilation itself until annihilation ceases to be? For the very need for it shows that there are in the universe, in the world of miasma and illusion, those creations of secondary nature the creations of man, of demon, and of demi-urge, those forces which urge man toward fornication of the spirit and toward the destructive momentums which have never given peace and harmony to any part of life. I come, therefore, this day, then, to expand the domain of the divine within you and to call for that illumination flame from the heart of God, from the heart of the lovely goddess and 
God Meru at Lake Titicaca for the expansion of Lumination's flame everywhere upon the planetary orb. Be at peace. Let your hearts rest in the stream of the divine. Let your hearts rest. Let the arms of the Almighty enfold you and feel that you are rocked in the arms of the Divine Mother. For I tell you that we are not going to permit mankind dedicated to these high ideals to stand ever idly in streams of complacency or pools of complacency. We are determined that there shall be a continuation of the flow of the divine into the world order, regardless of those discordant forces that have sought to dam it up or to condemn it. We are determined then that the eternal radiance and the realm of the ethereal shall be magnified, and that we shall show forth that as God has created beauty and manifested it in the kingdom of the flowers, in the kingdom of the birds, in the kingdoms of growing things, so the Lord God of the blue skies and the waving fields of grain is able to provide amply of the divine food, the manna from heaven for his children, not only in this present hour, but through all the reaches of eternal being and those days which are to come. Will you then, O oh, beloved students of the light, understand the need to keep yourselves pure in thought, to keep yourselves wedded to your cosmic identity, to keep yourselves free from a spirit of negativity and all mortal nonsense? Will you recognize with me the power of right thought to weld identity to higher ideals? Will you recognize with me that your own beloved Saint Germain and every exponent of freedom who has ever lived has understood the need to invoke from the heart of God that which God already is and appropriate it and make it his own. This is not a desecration, but an implementation of righteousness over the whole earth. It is the assumption of dominion by the individual, and it is that right action which will never construe the cosmic law into human nightmares of thought and feeling, but will always understand that this love, which is the love of the infinite, is not that which carries man away into dissimulation, but that which convenes him into a temple of universal concord, where the elect will serve the holy cause and the maintenance of the flame of freedom and the understanding of the universal heart and the prayers of the righteous, which rise as sweet incense before the holy throne of universal identity. We come then today to complete the beautiful work which we have long ago begun, to complete that work of creating in your understanding, your blessed understanding, the realization that the future is not bleak or dark, that it is not bleached bones upon the desert, that it is not a terminus written after your name, but it is a victory sign, a symbol of completion, for the day will come when you will perceive even in this life that that mission which you have so nobly begun or which you may have struggled through can also come to such a state of cosmic fruition as to be a bonus blessing to every part of life. And when you do understand that, you will have assimilated your divine identity to a greater and a more marked degree. We say to you then, let not your hearts be troubled, neither be afraid of that which is to come upon the earth or upon yourselves, but understand that you must be vigilant and alert to assume your rightful identity at all times, to do those things which are necessary at all times in the preservation of those elements of cosmic freedom for which the whole world longs and shall one day find as they surrender their own puny identities into the great arms of their divine presence and realize that cosmic spheres of life hold such dear reality as has never been shown forth in the outer octaves of manifestation. Will you then, understanding with me the need to accept this gift of your freedom, accept now that life as God directs it, as the future is planned for you, is one of the abundance of God showered upon you, the strength of his mind, 
Raying out into your own the power of his right arm, extending itself into the domain of your own, the power of his life as beating and sustaining your heart, the power of his intelligence as infusing through the Christ your own identity, the power of his victory as being the assumption of the mantle flame of cosmic freedom. Won't you understand with me that as you accept this, there can be no longer any room in you for quickly turning aside from the nobleness of cosmic ideals and brotherhood into the pitfalls of pride and ambition. I tell you that when you accept the grace of God, you have accepted the fulfillment of all life, and your pride and your ambition can be safely put aside, for the bestowal of the grace of God will be the crowning completion of all that is noble in life and grand, and you will no longer be a pauper while trying to struggle to express some figment of your imagination as that which you think you ought to be, you will see in its place that which God is and which you are, which is the Christ identity of every man stretching forth to the great parliament of man to the four corners of the earth and extending the boon of cosmic grace to this age and all ages that are to come. We who uphold the banner of the house of Recause say to you all, Rally today, rally God's way, rally for freedom, for God, for country, for the expansion of that holy country to which the traveler journeys, the born to which the traveler journeys and never returns. You will understand the meaning of that in its completion, for you will understand that the bosom of God, the realm of his heart, the place where the prodigal son can return, is the place where you can find the fulfillment of all your dreams, not in an activity of idleness, but in an assumption of the mantle robes, of the ascension, of your victory, of divine mastery, of divine service, and of divine life. And if you must at times, perchance, as Teresa did, scrub the stairways of life and create those gentle soap bubbles while others say you are but a scrub woman, or an individual devoted to some little humble task, let me assure you that when you see that you have been actually polishing the great temples of light in higher octaves by your own grace externalized, you will see that you are worthy to walk upon those streets of gold so-called, for the illumination flame will have shed its light on you, and you will be one of those immortals who understand that it is indeed more blessed to give than to receive. Out of the bounty of cosmic grace, out of the bounty of the light of his face, out of the depth of my heart and soul, I give to you that golden bowl that you may never more break it, but hold within it and retain forever the essence of victorious dedication to the ergo sum, the fulfillment of the Most High God's Cry, lo, I am, O God, for thou art. Lo, I am, for thou art. Lo, I am, for thou art in me, fulfilling all my dreams and the passions of thy thought from the days of Adam, the first Christ, unto the last Adam, the last Christ, the trump who shall sound forth the victory of all life and the fulfillment of this epoch in to the halls of eternity. I thank you and extend to you my hands of grace in cosmic service.
dear hearts. Through the radiant blue sky over America, from lofty levels of divine consciousness, descends a great eagle, symbol of universal power, carrying the radiation and strength of holy wisdom and that militant love of God that defends all mankind against its universally seeming enemies. Let it be made clear now then that the darkness of the world is becoming the recipient of the greater light. That the designs of God for the children of men and the perpetuation of glorious ideals for all nations are coming into manifestation that the cup of light which God brings to the whole world in his holy mountain is being made manifest that even as there was an old Jerusalem, so also now there is a new Jerusalem, manifest symbol of the city four square of the kingdom of God upon earth that descends as a bride adorned to meet her husband. As we envision now the tremendous hopes of the mothers of the world, we are aware of how the potential of God is being realized through the mothers of the world. Well might they then gaze upward at the universal image of the mother of the world. Well might they understand the cult of the mother. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. And truly in this hour, when the destiny of America seems in such question, it is essential that there ring out the bells of freedom proclaiming to the land that their freedom is in their youth. This fact known also by those harbingers of darkness who would wrest that power from the ages is very important and must be thought on daily by mankind that they may forge in the American dream and in the dream for the world an understanding of the resurgence of Christ's morality. Long ago, the master walking the hillsides of Judea proclaimed these words, Consider the lilies of the field, how they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like unto one of thee. Now let us consider for a moment how that there is a great desire in men to be a king, to take dominion over themselves, to master their world, to attain in the world that preeminence either in service or manifestation which will bring to them some recognition. But we are concerned only with the fulfillment of the ideals of God, not with mortal recognition. For those who serve the infinite causes of freedom will find themselves on record in those archives of the Almighty which can never be destroyed by fire, which can never be consumed by rust, which moths cannot eat, 
and which thieves cannot break through into or steal. They will find on record in the archives of God the memorials to their service, which are the greatest blessing possible to any. Let me say then this day, in the name of God and this great descending symbol of the eagle, that courage is needed to resurrect in men their original destiny, the destiny which God envisioned for this whole land and for the whole earth. For America was intended by St. Germain and those others of the ascended master's level, including your own beloved Jesus, to be a nation that would, by reason of its sovereign power of love and law, the upholder in the republic of those virtues for the world, which are the virtues of truth and freedom. The power of Almighty God, the power and strength of his right arm, was intended to manifest in the strong men of this nation. Because this was so, because the dream was an old one, and one that did indeed flourish, as you saw the rail splitter come forth from Illinois and seek through the presidency to free those who were slaves. You will understand then today that those who are coming forth to supposedly implement their freedom are only bringing them into the bondage that hatred always produces. For the laws of karma and the laws of freedom are spiritual laws, and mankind should understand that only by the cultivation of spiritual virtues can they know their freedom. I am come today to proclaim the freedom of this land, to proclaim the freedom of the world, to set forth before ye all that virtue and truth as it was originally proclaimed without malice and skullduggery, without the skulking of men's hearts in strange and secret chambers was real. Won't you please be seated? I say to you today then that only by virtue of truth in public office that only by the virtue of an activity of attunement whereby men do seek through the measure of lofty prayer to find the thoughts and designs of God can the full measure of this nation's service to its citizenry come into reality only as men understand that virtue is set before them as public Example, will they be able to learn from the hand of God the truths which today have been set down and trampled upon? For everyone in public office, everyone in private life who does in any way perform disservice to God or country, everyone who extends to mankind the activity of bad example are themselves guilty before the Almighty of inducing the youth that shall follow them to do those acts of infamy which tear down and destroy this nation and trample her flag into the dust. We who have understood the meaning of America, we who in the early days understood how we had to fight against tyranny, understand the meaning now of its preservation, the preservation of the flag, the preservation of those ideals for which we fought and bled and died. We understand also that the ragged band that in the beginning did follow in our footsteps were themselves devotees of no mean order, but carvers out in the world of a destiny which they hoped would become the lot of all who would follow in their footsteps. Somewhere along the line, the power of bad example 
has trampled those ideals of peace and freedom into the dust, and America now is plagued on every side by a host of enemies. We then who understand the meaning of proclaiming the example of the living God, of setting before you the concept which has been long recorded in sacred writ, they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Call to your attention that the virtues of harmlessness are essential within the soul and thought of men. But in a world today which is torn by violence, there is still a need for those military defenses which must either be utilized to their fullest extent or rust into decay and the nation herself fall with it. For there are those today who would take all that America is and all that she has of her outer world resources and bring them into subservience from within by creating a socialistic state which will not serve the purposes of God or provide that measure of freedom and reality which the world seeks. Rather, it will bring new states of bondage and terror to the world and destroy all the original intents of the founding fathers for this great land, that it might become a public example to the world of the ideal republic, a nation under God which would seek to externalize a golden age radiance in its educational system, to proclaim to the youth of the world an inviolate faith in the majesty of he who swung out the luminous orbs into space and proclaimed the increments of movement for them all. I say to you then, not as a private example, but as a public one, that I stand with America as every ascended and cosmic being does for the cultivation of a spirit of beauty and perfection in the youth. I advocate the study of courtesy by the young that they may learn those lofty ideals of respect for the aged and respect for those institutions which were so nobly created to proclaim the divine example to mankind that nations might not gather together anymore to learn the arts of war, but to beat their spears into plowshares and pruning hooks, to see to it that the cultivation of the fruit of the earth is not only the cultivation of temporal fruit, but also of that fruit which is the fruit of the spirit, as ideal youth will manifest those noble examples which in part were proclaimed through the auspices of Lord Baden-Powell under the direction of St. Germain as the Boy Scouts of America. I say to you today that our hearts do tremble as we see and understand how that they have trampled upon the banners of the Lord and they have taught mankind those awful manifestations of shame and selfishness as disrespect for parental authority, as disrespect for God and country. Through the school systems of America, they have taught the darkness of their own atheistic minds and consciousness. They have taught conspiracy and conspiratorial actions. They have taught children to go against their parents and against their institutions, which did hold and reposit within them those manifest virtues which ought to have been enhanced by each generation and passed on as nobler than the last. We say then today that America still great in the dream of God, America still great in the consciousness of the ascended masters, America as a cup of light to the earth is herself the servitor of the world. She is the servitor of the world in keeping with the divine image. She kneels to wash the feet of every nation upon this planet, to wash their feet in service and divine love. She kneels 
not to compromise her ideals, but to extend them into manifestation. And we have seen also, for example, how that even in Africa, that little nation of Ghana has sought to externalize some of the great virtues which they have recognized in America and in Britain through the scholastic standards which were leveled in their country amongst their multitudes and scattered to the enhancement of some form of virtue. We are pleased then to see that they take a stand, limited although it may be by size and the fashion of their consciousness for the great cosmic radiance which they seek. We pray that all nations then may be bathed in the holy light and the resurgence of that light which was intended to make the kingdoms of this world the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Hundreds of years ago, under one of the popes, a great crusade was launched against the Holy Land and against those who were esteemed to be insurgent forces holding the Holy Land in bondage. Today the record is clear that not everyone who saith, Lord, Lord, is able to actually walk in the footsteps of our Lord, that there is a greater and higher understanding which is necessary for all mankind, and that understanding is the way of love, not the way of dogma. And therefore, whereas in this land there are diverse religions and religious concepts, let us make it plain and proclaim it today that the virtues of Almighty God do dwell in various levels of consciousness, for consciousness herself does manifest various levels of the spiritual identity and consciousness of the Father. Let all understand then and understand it well that they are climbing a ladder of God-realization, whether they be at the lowest rung of the ladder, scarcely yet able to have some awareness of their own identity and of the meaning of life and purpose. Let us make it clear that God has provided through the great stairways of opportunity a new birth of freedom for all, and hope, therefore, should not perish from the earth, and faith should not perish from the earth, and charity should not perish from the hearts of men. We urge then upon all an understanding of that cosmic truth, of that cosmic law, of that cosmic spirit, and of that power of proclaimed justice, that there is a continuing need to prevent the crippling of the minds of the children of the world by those enemies of this republic and this world who seek by their damning of the world's institutions to turn those very individuals who have the fire of God within them from their proclaimed destiny proclaimed by the Father and keep them in some round of bondage surfeited unto the darkness that they have yet as untransmuted substance within their minds and being. We say, let us proclaim the ritual of freedom. Let us proclaim the ritual of that full meaning of God's love for men. Let us proclaim that freedom which is the proclamation of the rider upon the white horse. He who goeth forth to say, there is upon me and upon my brow the power of universal truth. The stars above me by their shining radiance proclaim to the whole earth that the designs of God are splendid in their shining, that they remain as the stars to be discovered, the realms in instellar space both within as well as without to which men may dedicate themselves in fulfillment of the cosmic dream. America identifies with that dream as she reaches out in her highest sense of cosmic love and law, as she holds that jurisprudence sacred which comes down through the ages to guarantee to every son of the republic that specific quality of life which is his own special bond for freedom 
he can go forth then into the world and serve God and country. He can become illustrious in the service of the light and he can glow with that self-regenerative power which God has already placed within the force field of his individual conscience and consciousness so that he can live and be a son of the republic to look and to learn and to understand that God and his freedom, that God and the power and passion of his life shall not perish from the earth, that we today taking power of the example of the avatars of the past can set sail for a destiny so noble and so grand that by reason of its great guiding light it shall stir us all to a regeneration of those fond divine concepts which in the early days of this nation provided inspiration as well as perspiration for all of us to press forward toward those ideals of the spirit which are themselves the full fruit of divine realization. For within everyone there is a spark. It is a spark that crieth halt to all that is the darkness on them all. It crieth halt to all that would destroy us all. It crieth halt when men march forward wrongly guided. It crieth halt when men are upset, topsided, turned upside down. We call them to all and say, take now a renewed direction, seek the crown of life, the crown that passeth over all things dark and sordid, reaching out its hands and heart to purity's ray. This is the crown today that Christ and God uphold. It is the crown, the crown of solid gold, the crown of life, the beauty ending strife and providing for all men the understanding of the Prince of Peace. In the name of the Living One, I proclaim to you all the continuation of that virtue which goeth forth today to enfire the hearts of men afresh. In the name of the living Christ, in the name of the destiny of the world, in the name of the destiny of America, I salute you. General George Washington, otherwise known as the beloved ascended master Godfrey. Sign of the heart, the head, and the hand to you. May the peace of your presence abide with you wherever you are, wherever you go. May the glorious peace from his presence flow through days of service and nights of rest. May the peace of your presence keep you blessed. The sign of the heart, the head, and the hand to you. May the eternal God in his cosmic cross of white fire Watch between us all and keep us reverent in our attitudes toward the light. So be it.
From the fires of the central sun I am come, and I bring with me those pulsations of infinite love and power which are the forte of the Godhead, the all-embracing reality of your own divine God presence, that which sunders from the consciousness feelings of fear and oppression and brings man to the understanding of those fiats which were sent forth in the beginning by God. Let there be light. Light is the radiant cultural energy of the spirit by which all things were made, and light is the grace by which everyone is able to come to an understanding of the casting out of fear and the entering into the joy of God, the joy of reality, the joy of purity, the joy of fulfillment, the joy even of the wonder of his love. I am Hercules, devoted then to the solemn manifestation of the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believeth. Have then in your hearts that faith which moves mountains. Have then in your minds that faith which holds reverently unto the hand of God. You say, in your natural mind, where is the hand of God? Know ye then that the hand of God is manifest in myriad ways throughout nature. Through the ascended master's consciousness, through the activities of the angelic hosts, through the radiation that comes so gently or so powerfully, through the ethers from afar or nigh at hand. The power of God, the faith of God, identifies so completely with the love of God that sometimes there are those who say, why do we have these different categories and classifications? Well, beloved ones, they are necessary for in the world of form, in time and space, in consciousness, these qualities do act according to cosmic law and provide specific grace for different situations which arise and which man must cope with. Will you then today, as I am speaking unto you, Close the door of your consciousness to those noisy, intruding concepts of mortality. Will you for a moment cease to think of yourselves as a person having longevity? I do not care how long you think you will live. We want you today to cast aside the idea that you will ever die. For you were created by life, and life is God, and God cannot die. The abundant life consciousness then must be imbued within you, must be nurtured, must be cultivated, must be magnetized and drawn forth. Think not then of the day when you will leave or vacate this physical temple or transmute it and its energies into the radiance of the Christ in the glories of the ascension, but think instead of the complete flow of the tiny dewdrop into the sea. For the ocean waits, and while the breakers dash against the shoreline, 
we are confident that you can hear within the inner ear of being the sound of far off worlds and the cries of life seeking to manifest in that which is to come and that which is a part of the foreverness of God. By separating yourself in consciousness then from the idea of temporal life, you are able more easily to enter into the flow of eternal life. And the flow of eternal life will bring the rapture of radiant joy, the pulsations of God, which are his strength and courage to face in many bodies and without in the macrocosmic world of nature all of those circumstances of struggle which crucify the Christ afresh and seek to put him to an open shame. We then today from higher octaves of light fashioned according to his holy will come to you to convey grace to bring strength to enter into the world with the resemblance of his image. His image, you say, is lost. I say his image has never been lost, but only to men who have caught sight of the figures of good and evil. And as their minds have vacillated, going first toward evil and then toward good, they have from time to time lost sight of the tremendous radiance that was the fulfillment of the divine image in its original bestowal. For God gave to man life. God gave to man strength. God gave to man the fire of his heart and the fire of adoration and the fire to sweep aside the darkness and to push back all things that were not of the light. And this man must learn to do if he is going to become victor over all outer circumstances. You cannot submit to those voices of the night that come into your consciousness from time to time and say you cannot. You cannot submit to the darkness of the world's thought. You dare not drink the drop of mortal ideas and even mortal ideologies without first applying your heart to God for divine wisdom. For divine wisdom is the pulsation of the Almighty. It is the pulsation of his mind and the tongues of flame that are from the mind of God reach out and lick mortal substance and whenever they contact mortal substance I want you to know that the purpose is not destruction but the spirals of construction the spirals of recreation the spirals of transmutation the spirals of resurrection the flame of God magnificence that kindles in each mind an awareness of the power of that mind to penetrate through substance and to seek in the invisible realm the glory of God that is everywhere. Oh, what a magnificent shining is in this glory that rests not then upon land or sea, but upon the heart and upon the vision of men to cause their vision to become enlivened once again, to penetrate the long ranges of the dark and distant past and to stand in the moment of the present searching out the future as the glory of cosmic happiness in fulfillment. What then does it matter, precious one? concerning those paltry happenings that sometimes so distress you. What does it matter? Follow thou the Christ. Follow thou the light. 
seek to penetrate the shrouds of darkness and human misery. They are not real. They must be burned away as veils before the face of cosmic purpose. And this we will do for the world. They see it not now. They think that their good and their glory lies in the fulfillment of some mortal dream. Yea, they suppose that when they have created the utopian government here upon earth, that all men will live in peace and harmony and all will be well. But what of rectification? What of those who have died in all of the wars that man has created? In all of the struggles that mankind have been embroiled in? What of the tortured ones? What of their dreams that remain unfulfilled? By the grace of God, through his infinite mercy, men and women do re-embody, coming back here upon this planet, in some cases to the scene of their crimes and in other cases to the scenes of their victory. But would you not rather, precious ones, come back to the scene of your victory, even though it was partial and incomplete, to once again resume where you left off and then fulfill in one glorious, majestic life the whole purposes of Christ's identity. I think that you would, and therefore I say to you today, oh, remember him, the ancient of days. Remember him who laid the foundations of the world Remember the place of Mizpah. Remember the place where the Lord lay his head. Remember the pillowing of his identity within thyself. And out of the great pulsations of the light, the cascading from the eternal fount, see the surge of the abundant life from within, glowing and infusing you with a sense of triumph that will not be denied. You say outer conditions have power. What is the range of that power? It is only a finite range. We are concerned with infinite ranges. We are concerned with infinite glory. We are concerned with infinite strength. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Know ye not then that the resurrection flame is also a friend of the ascension flame? The saturation of the student body by these flames is a tangible entering into the brotherhood of light. For whereas mankind have in their own empty meanderings from time to time posed the idea to their mortal consciousness that they as individuals could find that hidden door by some perception of the carnal mind, we who know the mysteries of initiatic lore understand that it is an entering into light. For light is the place where God dwells, and out of the fountain of his mighty light he sends forth his rays, and these rays do indeed elevate the consciousness of man, not only to the stars, but above the stars, but not through the empty and vain glorious activity of human egoism, but through the manifestation of the cosmic law whereby the ego is raised. Ergo sum, behold, blessed ones, the raising of the soul to its place of virtue. Behold the raising of the soul to its place of strength. Behold the welding of the fabric, the vulcanizing of the finite world to the infinite. And see how that by the fire of cosmic majesty, light becomes a part of the reality of the individual and the individual strengthened immeasurably by his contact with light is able to be illumined in mind and heart to govern the emotional body 
to govern all worlds whatsoever and to enter into solemn communion with the angelic hosts. This is our activity, but it is first God's. You are also partakers of this inheritance made a little lower than the angels, yet crowned with more glory than we. But we come. We come to surround you with the fire of his heart, the pulsations from the throne room of his reality. We come to surround you with not only the voice of thunder, but the still small voice speaking within heart and mind. We come to surround you with that flame that is the unquenchable flame, with that life which is that abundant life, that you may lift high the torch of this reality and hold it always and ever upward in the face of all darkening conditions. As you do then, you will see not only into the tomb where the Lord no longer lays, but you will see also beyond the tomb to the victory of the eternal presence, to the victory of your God self, to the strength that comes down from the ages and returns to the ages that rose with his purpose across the whole span of the years, illumining the hearts and wiping away from every eye all tears. His strength is union then divine. His strength will make you ever one, ever complete in all of the glory of cosmic purpose. Won't you now then take from yourself by a conscious willing all substance that is less than perfection? Will you realize with me that the puny identifications men make are vanity indeed? Will you realize then that all of that vanity can be transmuted by God this day? Oh, you say what a colossal task. Would you then clear with me the Augean stables? Understand then that human consciousness is all of that. For human consciousness itself has been fattened upon that corn which is impure. That which is spoiled and the products of the spoilers. And the corn from the barns of God has been ignored and men have eaten that which is unholy, and they have given that which is holy unto the dogs. Now therefore we come to say unto you one and all, if you will enter into the divine consciousness this day, the flame of the Elohim will assist you in the transmutation of those thoughts of human degradation, of those thoughts of human limitation, of those thoughts that keep you separate and apart from God and will therefore act in your world to consume those human qualities and see that they no longer have life and body and substance in your world and are replaced by the throb of cosmic identity, the great cosmic heartbeat of the Almighty, which surges and surges and surges through your world to say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And because the love of God is with you, because the love of God is in you, because the love of God surrounds you, because you are that love, therefore the flame that is that love will quite naturally consume those human ideas and human limited expressions of human effort and replace them by the great divine outreach, the giant leap into the arms of God, the identity of man who becomes then no longer a mortal subject to mortal limitation, but becomes, as Moses said long ago, a God.
saying to the children of Israel, ye are gods. I say to you today, in the name of Almighty God, that I, Hercules, best you who will accept my flame with the power to transmute and change, to elevate and to perfect your worlds, that this world may speedily become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, that all of the vapory forces that now seek to take dominion over the mind of men may be put to flight and routed to the place where they ought to be routed and replaced then by the victorious coming of the living Christ descending with his holy saints to come then as Enoch prophesied long ago saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon those who are ungodly. And we shall see the restoration of the righteous boundaries to all. And we shall see, as according to the law of ancient masonry, the restoration of the old temples, where the beauty of holiness, glorifying God even as he glorifies man, becomes a joint endeavor of the Spirit most holy. This will be done for the Lord liveth, and he liveth to shake the earth, even as a terrier shakes a little rodent. Therefore I say to you, the earth shall be shaken and chastened, but the earth shall yield her fruit in her appointed rounds, and the earth which is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, we do claim for all who love the first charge of cosmic identity, the first ray, the first radiance, the first day of the Holy Week, when the Lord sends forth his allness of purpose into manifestation. It shall not return unto me void, saith the Lord, and therefore we today do surround you with the power and flame of the infinite name, ineffable and most holy. I thank you, and I praise the Ancient of Days. I thank you, and I praise those ancient ways. I thank you, and I see descending now the beautiful eye of God in the capstone of a perfect world, a perfect creation. Let that banner be unfurled and proclaimed from every mountain height. For the Lord is victory. The Lord is victorious over the night. He is Lord of all. He is the sun risen with healing in his wings.